Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. I apologise it's been a couple of days. It always seems like when Chelsea lose, I don't post the video for a few days. I promise you, it's not meant to be that way. I've genuinely been feeling awful this week. I've been feeling super sick. Not really been wanting to record videos because my voice has been a little bit screwed and I've been like heavy breathing. So I've waited until I was fit and healthy enough to do so. I hope you guys can understand. I know some people can't, but at the same same time I'm a human being I'm not a robot and it just so happens that me feeling like crap seems to coincide with Chelsea being beaten which I don't know maybe psychologically there's something involved with it in there but I'm back today with six things that we learned from Wolves 2 Chelsea 1 of all of the defeats we've had this season this one felt like the hardest one to take this one felt like the hardest one to accept as a result of the scoreline there is some criticism that should come in heavy on some of the individual players that just aren't performing up to a level that we would expect and that we want and demand from our players players in a Chelsea team that this season should be making steps forward to what we had last season which was a top four finish and FA Cup final. We spent a lot of money and when it doesn't go right I think as though as fans and as a club we need to be you know on the ball with addressing it and making sure that it doesn't go on for any longer than it needs to. So Wolves 2 Chelsea 1. Let's talk first of all about the nature of the game before we get into the boxes which I think today you guys are probably going to agree with what I have to say because I'm going to be quite aggressive with some of my criticism today because we played two matches in a row both away from home you look at it on paper Everton and Wolves are not easy games you know you, you, if you go away from home and you maybe draw both of those games you're disappointed but you can see the bigger picture of their tough games against difficult opponents and you can move on from it but when you lose in the nature in which we did Big questions deserve to be asked of Frank Lampard's Chelsea. A week ago, we were saying Chelsea can win the title. I was sitting here confident on my channel saying we can win this league, you know. And after other teams around us struggled and stumbled, we were given an opportunity again to go back to the top of the table. But not only do we lose, but we lose from a winning position, which I find absolutely baffling as my phone pings. So, you know, the fact that we were 1-0 up and then we managed to lose the game says that there is a lot about what is happening within this Chelsea side right now that isn't quite ticking. And I do feel as though a lot of that is down to individual personnel who are just not up to the level that Chelsea expect and that Chelsea need in a very highly competitive Premier League. So box number one is, no surprisingly really, a red box for Timo Werner. It's the second video in a row where I don't like scapegoating individuals for poor performances and making them the sole reason why we lose football matches. But Timo Werner started again on the left wing and he looked as though he just was never really involved in the game. When the second half, which I think in particular was probably the worst half of football from Chelsea, I thought we were good in the first half. We dominated large swathes of the game. In the second half, Timo Werner didn't look up to any kind of standard that we would expect. He was losing the ball. It's all well and good getting into the right positions, which Timo Werner does quite a lot, and he at least attempts to get into the right positions. But in this game at Wolves, he just did not look up to it whatsoever. And I don't know if it's because he's playing on the left wing and he's a striker primarily, we know that and at the moment Chelsea are having to cater for injuries that we wouldn't have foreshadowed such as Pulisic was out until this game, hudson Adoy's is out, Ziyech is out and it does make us short for numbers in a system that Frank Lampard wants to play which is the 4-3-3. I suggested in my match preview that we try and go with a different kind of formation. We stop playing players out of position and we kind of create something new, a plan B which is basically our way of saying, you know what, we can deal with injuries because we've got so many players who are so good in certain positions that we can field something totally different. I thought that the 4-1-2-1-2 slash 4 2 2 2 that I created would have been something which would have seen players that are a little bit out of form, such as Timo Werner, play in more favoured positions. We didn't go for it and I feel as though at the moment we're really struggling because there are two players in particular and I will mention the second one a little later. There are two players who Chelsea expect a lot from that right now just aren't playing well enough and a lot of that is down to brand new systems in a new league, new country but also being played out of favoured positions which I think when you bring a player in for the kind of money that Timo Werner has been bought in from 
there is a pressure from the people above Frank Lampard to tell Lampard, you know what, we spent a lot of money on these geezers just because they're out of form, they've got to be in the team. You know, these guys sell shirts. These guys have been brought in to win us trophies. And I think it's a tough one right now for Frank Lampard. It's a dilemma where, you know, maybe Timo Werner's form does not deserve him to be in the starting 11. But when you partner it up with injuries, and all the options that we have of different personnel to play in those positions in a system that Frank Lampard thinks works, there's not really many other options but to stick Timo Werner on the left. The problem is that Christian Pulisic was obviously fit enough to start and he didn't start in his favoured position either. So Timo Werner is currently in the side, not based off of merit because he's not playing well enough, he stopped scoring goals and he desperately needs to improve. Whether he'll play against West Ham or not, I personally, at this moment in time, after watching that game against Wolves, don't think that he should. So we move into box number two, and it is a player that I just mentioned. I thought, again, he looked one of the sharpest players on the pitch in the first half. Christian Pulisic back in the Chelsea side, and he showed the quality that he has. Chelsea were not clinical enough in that first half, and we didn't really create enough clear-cut chances within the game. But focusing on the positives, I thought Christian Pulisic's movement was good. It almost looked as though, I said before the game, that if Pulisic starts, then it might seem as though we've wrapped him up in cotton wool and maybe he doesn't try and take players on and run at defences the way that we've seen him and that we're used to him doing. But it was almost as if he'd like doubled his hamstring in the sense of like he looked double as sharp as normal considering he just came back from yet another injury. And I think moving forward for Chelsea, it's going to be key that Christian Pulisic is in this side. He can steer away from injuries. And despite Chelsea losing the game, I thought Pulisic was one of our best creators. Olivier Giroud did manage to score the goal. And I've not actually given him a box today because I thought other than the goal, I didn't think Giroud offered anywhere near enough. It's very rare, particularly in a Chelsea loss, that one of the green boxes or more positive boxes isn't designed towards a striker. I don't think Giroud did enough for me. I wasn't that impressed with anything else he did, but the goal, which again was pretty close to not being a goal. Olivier Giroud doesn't get a green. Christian Pulisic does. And we move into box number three. And box number three is another German that has come in for a lot of money and that just is not anywhere near the level right now that Chelsea would expect him to be at. Kai Havertz would... <laughs> It's almost as if we could have played with 10 men. You know, I don't like to be that guy that gives some really flipping harsh criticism towards players. But Havertz was absolutely nowhere near on it. There are a lot of people right now comparing him to Meza Ozil. I've heard it going around social media. I've seen it with a couple of pundits as well. And I feel as though at the moment Havertz is playing a little bit like Ozil, but not the Ozil that was good. He was playing a bit like the Ozil that has just been shunned out of Arsenal, is almost desperate to just get any other club. And this Kai Havertz is tough because we, we do have to understand that with the coronavirus, I have not had it. I've had like times where I felt like I might be a bit under the weather. Kai Havertz did have it, and supposedly he had very heavy symptoms of the coronavirus. But the issue that I have is that if Frank Lampard is picking Kai Havertz, Yes, he's recovered, but is he recovered to a level where he can perform like the Kai Habits that we know is there? At the moment, particularly this game against Everton and Wolves, it was nothing like the Kai Habits that we spent £72 million on. He was totally off the pace, and like I said, at times, he might as well have not been on the pitch. He didn't offer anywhere near enough. I'm seriously worried now about his current form. I don't want to say that I don't believe in him, because that's a lie. I do firmly believe in him, but at the moment... I wouldn't be starting him. He's not up to the standard that we need. He needs to be working a lot harder, taking more risks, and I don't think he's doing anywhere near enough at this moment in time. Now I move into box number four, and when you concede a 95th minute goal, there are always questions that have to be asked about the concentration of the players on the field. Kurt Zuma, I've been singing his praises all season. You guys have been singing his praises as well. He's been one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League this year. He wasn't concentrating for the Wolves goals. I thought he should have put in a lot more. And when you can see the goal in the nature that we did, so late in the game, the 95th minute, I would have been disappointed if we would have come away from this game with just one point, considering I felt as though in the first half in particular, we did enough to win. But to lose it in that kind of fashion says to me that these players are not switched on enough at this moment in time. To, to concede a counter kind of goal 
the way that that Wolves second goal went in is nowhere near good enough for the standard of competing for the Premier League title that just a week ago I was sat here discussing as a Chelsea fan here on the GBFC channel. We were in a title conversation, we still technically are mathematically because Spurs were beaten at Liverpool. Liverpool dropped points at the weekend and they've only really gone four points above us so it's not an, an unsurmountable amount and six points would have still given us a chance but at this point in time Chelsea's title hopes are hanging on an absolute thread. We've got West Ham United, a massive London derby. They came to the bridge and beat us last season. They're also playing very well. And I go into this having watched these two performances against Everton, and I'm worried. I'm seriously worried. We lack all of the creativity that Hakim Ziyech brought into the team that really spiked this turn of form. And I'm seriously worried about us right now. We've got to be seriously concentrated. And I, I didn't actually give Lampard a box because I want to dedicate a whole video to talking about Chelsea's lack of plan B. And I'll be bringing that one out tomorrow. I'm worried about, you know, people always have questioned Frank's tactical naivety maybe at times. And with these two matches at Everton and Wolves where we do have a lot of injuries, but we're not adjusting the system in order to fit the players that we do have available, which sometimes in football... You just need to change the flipping system in order to fit to the qualities of the individual players that have that moment in them to win you a game whether you're playing well or whether you're not playing well. Timo Werner and Kai Havertz, we know they're both players with that potential, with that moment of magic inside of them, and we're playing them both out of position. And I think it's time that we did potentially try something new when all of the natural quality going forward on the, wing, on the wings is out or Pulisic is being played out. All right. Now I move into box number five and I've given a green again to N'Golo Kante who I actually thought was probably Chelsea's best player throughout the majority if not the entirety of the game. I thought Kante was absolutely everywhere in the first half. He was winning balls back, he was making good passes and compared to a lot of the players that I could have singled out for individual criticism and that I picked on the two young Germans, I don't want to just think that it was Timo Werner and Kai Havertz that lost us the game but they were a big reason why we weren't anywhere near good enough. I thought N'Golo Kante was exceptional again. I am more than confident, despite the fact that the system didn't work in an attacking sense, I'm more than confident enough with N'Golo Kante playing solo in front of the defence. I thought he had a very good game. And I move into box number six, and it really is a point that I want to raise that will be discussed again in an upcoming video before the West Ham game. Chelsea's chances of winning the title... Whenever you have an opportunity to actually take a stand in the league and go to the top of the table, not only do you build serious confidence and momentum within yourselves because you are top of the league and currently you're the best in the land. When you lose matches against teams that you probably should be beating if you want to mount a challenge, it knocks the confidence and at the moment these Chelsea players will be panicking. They were so close to the top of the league. We still are pretty close mathematically because no one's really running away with it. Teams are dropping points. City are drawing at home to West Brom, which, by the way, Conor Gallagher's got to be at Chelsea next season. He was phenomenal again for West Brom and Chalbion. And Chelsea had a serious opportunity. If we won both of these games, pardon me, if we won both of these games, we would have been at the top of the league. But we're not. And at the end of the day, I watched the performances. Flipping fly, get out of it. I watched both of these games, and I feel as though we could and should have won. Concentration at Wolves let us down. A lack of being clinical has just completely destroyed us in both of these games and conceding stupid goals. So I'm going to address the whole aspirations for winning the league this season. People have said, oh, you're not shouting anymore now that you've lost two in a row. I like to, you know, whenever Chelsea win, I do like to overhype things because I get excited. And you guys know that as a football fan, it's far more enjoyable if you believe you're going to win. Some people don't quite understand this in football. Some people think it's just me being completely delusional. A lot of it is building the hype, building the energy. I know that players feed off of it. Football clubs in general feed off of the positive energy that fans bring to their club. At the moment, I'm seeing everybody write Chelsea off. I think that could be slightly premature. However, if we don't pick up results in our next couple of games, people are right to say that Chelsea are no longer in the title race. But anyway, apologies again that the video is late. I've just not been feeling good. I've not been able to speak properly. So, you know, it's just life. This is my job to sit and talk to you guys in front of the camera. And if I can't perform up to standard, I'm not putting up subpar videos. So you're just going to have to live with it sometimes. Follow me on social media. That's where I keep you guys updated on what's going on if there is a problem. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button. 
and I will see you all tomorrow for a brand new Chelsea FC video. Catch you all there. Bye-bye.